A new piece is out in Salon tackling Tara Reid's sexual assault allegations against Joe Biden. That piece, written by Amanda Marcotte, is presented as a just-the-facts analysis of the competing claims surrounding those allegations. In particular, Marcotte attempts to argue that there's nothing to see here regarding media bias in failing to cover those claims. In fact, the massive gap between Marcotte's own past coverage of sexual assault survivors and how she's now treating Tara Reid exposes the very bias that she claims does not exist. Allow me to explain. Allow me to say that Amanda Marcotte is a sleazy journalist. Crystal is politely pointing out here that Amanda Marcotte has never covered rape victims in the past, but now for some reason decides to do so. First of all, the entire frame of the piece is a classic both sides false equivalence where the abject conspiracy theories of Biden supporters insisting that Tara Reid is a Russian agent or maybe even a mentally ill woman who appeared on Dr. Phil and believed that Putin was going to marry her are put up alongside Sanders supporters claims that A, the media is not covering the story, something which is just objectively true, and B, that Time's Up decided not to assist Tara because the person she was accusing was Joe Biden, something that that the organization acknowledges. As reported by Ryan Grimm and discussed here, Time's Up's excuse was that as a nonprofit, they worried giving aid to Tara or any other victim accusing a candidate for federal office could jeopardize their nonprofit status. This reading of the law is, of course, extremely conservative at best and laughably dubious at worst. In the coverage by Ryan Grimm of The Intercept, it was pointed out by a Loyola tax law professor that this reading of the law was crazy. There's no reason whatever that Time's Up shouldn't take this case. Even though it's a 501c3, that would not jeopardize its tax-exempt status. Honest, not sleazy coverage makes it very obvious that the reason Time's Up is not taking this case is because they're connected directly to the Biden campaign. Just to give you a sense, though, of the lengths that Marcotte went to make Tara look bad, she actually invented a new, different excuse for Time's Up. Marcotte argues that Time's Up doesn't assist victims with PR efforts, something which the organization itself never argued and which is, in fact, belied by the mission statement, which is posted on their website. The overall conclusion that Marcotte comes to in her piece is that Reed's story is credible and compelling in some important ways and also comes with a number of troubling red flags for a variety of reasons that has not been taken seriously on a national level. But those reasons do not include a mainstream media conspiracy to protect Joe Biden. So in essence, Marcotte acknowledges that the media has not taken Tara's allegations seriously, but explains it away as owing to a number of troubling red flags. She goes on to say the Me Too movement deserves better than to be dragged into the sleaze like this. And this is where things get complicated for Marcotte because many of the troubling red flags that made Tara's story so allegedly sleazy are some of the very same red flags that Amanda seemed to understand were a baseless distraction when it came to covering Trump and Kavanaugh accusers. For some reason, however, a different standard is applied to Tara. So Amanda's conclusion is, did Time's Up refuse to help Reed as a political favor to Biden? Almost certainly not. Whereas Ryan Grimm of The Intercept says, almost certainly. As Reed herself said when she was interviewed by Pro Sanders pundit Crystal Ball, Time's Up offered her considerable help when she first reached out to the organization. In its partnership with the National Women's Law Center, Time's Up connected Reed with a number of lawyers who interviewed her to see if she had a case worth pursuing. None of those lawyers took Reed on as a client. I've covered this recently and pointed out the fact that many of these lawyers were Biden supporters. Others said that they were afraid of Joe Biden. So the cover-up goes beyond the media. The cover-up goes to the whole machinery surrounding Biden. People are afraid of Biden. They don't want to cross the Clinton machine or Obama world or the CIA. They don't want to cross Hollywood and Creative Artists Agency and United Talent Agency. Now here's the crux of the matter. It's important to understand here that Time's Up Legal Defense Fund only provides support beyond these referrals, such as PR assistance, if a client obtains a lawyer and moves to take legal action on workplace harassment. Fact is, that's not a fact. It's a lie. It's not what their website says. But if it were true, then the news, the breaking news that Tara Reid has obtained legal counsel and has filed a criminal complaint should be relevant, right? Turns out Business Insider came out yesterday with Biden accuser Tara Reid files criminal complaint over 1993 allegation. Sounds like she got a lawyer to take her case. 
A woman who accused Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden of sexually assaulting her when she worked for him in 1993 has filed a formal criminal complaint with the Washington, D.C. police about the alleged incident Business Insider has learned. Tara Reid says she told police that Biden assaulted her in a Senate corridor, shoving his hand under her skirt and penetrating her with his fingers. She was a staffer in his Senate office at the time. The statute of limitations for the alleged assault has passed. Reid first made her allegations late last month in a podcast interview saying that Biden had assaulted her and touched her without consent while the two were alone after she delivered him a gym bag. Late Thursday afternoon, Reid filed a report of the incident with the Sexual Assault Unit of the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department. Business Insider has obtained a public incident report recording the allegation. When Reid first made the sexual assault allegation last month, Biden's team issued a blanket denial. Women have a right to tell their story and reporters have an obligation to rigorously vet those claims, Kate Bedingfield, Biden's communications director, said. We encourage them to do so because these accusations are false. So let's turn to the Twitter, shall we? In response to Ryan Grimm's reporting that Dianne Feinstein was holding onto a letter from a Kavanaugh accuser. Here's what Marcotte had to say then. This is how this will go. If Kavanaugh's accuser stays anonymous, this will be treated as the reason not to believe her. If she steps forward, something about her life identity will be seized on as the reason not to believe her. And you know what? Amanda was correct. And yet in her article on Tara Reid, she seems not to recognize this same tactic being used and in fact indulges in the instinct herself. In particular, she spends a fair amount of space on the attempt to dismiss Tara with the same red baiting tactics that are used to dismiss anyone with inconvenient views these days. Marcotte ultimately bravely concludes that Tara is not a Kremlin agent, nor is she the woman from Dr. Phil, but not before engaging in a lengthy exploration of her views on Russia, as if holding an unpopular or fringe or even ill-informed view has anything to do with whether or not a powerful man sexually assaulted you. Here's a tweet by Fox Draws, birthday clown. Love that former Biden is trending, but hashtag Tara Reid somehow is not, considering every post with former Biden in it, I'm seeing directly mentions her and or the hashtag. So this came out about 1.45 this morning. This started to trend on Twitter, former Biden. But what it really proves is that I believe Tara Reid and the other Tara Reid hashtags have been suppressed by Twitter. And this happens regularly on Twitter. I don't think the Twitter algorithms can keep up with quotations yet. They know how to suppress the hashtags. But I noticed when it was 15% of Bernie supporters will vote directly for Donald Trump when the USA Today report came out, the hashtags that we wanted to trend weren't trending, but that quotation was trending. 15% of Bernie, and it was going everywhere. And I don't know if they know how to suppress that by now or not. Suffice it to say, when news stories come out on Twitter that they don't like, it doesn't take them very long to squelch the trends as they happen. I guess the first point I want to make here is that Amanda Marcotte is a sleazy journalist, but the more important point to make is that she's part of a big group of people who don't want this story to break. And that group of people includes the New York Times, it includes Washington Post, it includes CNN and MSNBC, and it includes Wall Street Journal. It includes the rich and the powerful and the famous people who want to protect Joe Biden. And yes, that includes former President Barack Obama. All of the groups that reported on the Brett Kavanaugh situation last time are strangely silent this time. 